Okay, thought it'd be a good time to do a two-year review of my draw system. Why is it a good time? Because I'm trading in this truck, I gotta take the draw system out. This is only the second time I've done a video on this draw system. I actually, the first one I did was a while ago, you know, pretty soon after I built it. Um, and it was basically a video around draw slides or no draw slides, my opinion on it. The video did very good, it overwhelmingly, you know, positive you know, feedback from, 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 from the video. It's one of my bigger ones. I think maybe not right now it's got 30,000 views, which for me, that's obviously that's, that's big because I'm, I'm a very small channel. But uh, so I figured I'd give my two year review. If I wanted to change anything, what would I change? Has it held up? Has there been any problems? So right away, I mean, we'll just get this out of the way. There's been no problems. There's no problems whatsoever. I mean, there's nothing to go wrong with it. That's the whole point of why I built it this way. So let's take a look. Now, obviously the cap's off. They took the cap off. And uh, just a review, if you didn't watch my, my, my previous video, I'll explain what this is. It's, it's just a four foot piece of plywood, three quarter plywood on the top. I used, you can see right here, I used uh, two by sixes, right? <laughs> it's been so long. Fat Max, very strong tape measure. Did I use two by sixes? No, I used two by eights. Two by eights on the side, and yeah, one by sixes here. That's where my confusion is. So I used the one by six here on top of OSB, half inch, which creates this gap. So we got seven and a half. This is one by six plus the half inch creates the gap. And you can see I used it in the center too. Two by eight, two by eight. It's rock solid, this thing. Strength wise, how much have I had loaded on top of here? Hmm. I picked up concrete, bags of concrete one time. I think it was about a thousand pounds. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that I could put more than a thousand pounds onto this. Interlocking foam lasted forever, uh, the entire time. I had it put in with just some, just some staples, some heavy duty staples right here. Worked out great for the dogs. The dog boxes are right over there and there's my big dog box over there, if you can even see it. I, have, I used to have this dog box sitting on top of it. This dog box weighs I don't know, 200 pounds, probably 250 pounds with the dogs, you know, almost 400 pounds. That's one of the things that I guess I would say I don't like about this. Now, granted, it's because how I built it. If you can see here, I use two by eights here, two by eight, two by eights. All this is two by eights on side, two by eight here, here and here. So it's pretty heavy. This two by eight and it has a piece on the inside, this two by eight. And I also used, I don't want to pull this out too far, but you can see I used four by four pieces right in here. So the weight is considerable. And I would say that unless you need the strength this way, you probably should go with you know, one by eight here. That, that would make more sense. Keep three quarter ply, I would say, but go with one by eight because in reality, one by eight is gonna be really strong this way. So I would say that the two by eight move, unnecessary, uh, does make it strong though, for sure. I mean, it's strong. It's just, but it's more weight. You gotta drive around more weight. Your tires are gonna wear. And for instance, these tires right here, these are the Goodyear Wranglers, um, didn't last very long. They didn't last very long because of the weight. Um, the weight had the dog box. This is another reason why I changed from that heavy dog box to to these these molded plastic ones, way lighter. So I probably saved about 150 pounds going with this right here. So reducing the weight, ideal. I got a lot of dividers in here. This is another you know, if you can do with less dividers or make thinner dividers, I used one. Try and use half inch. Half inch ply would be a lot better than that. Also, I used a lot of pressure treated. This is another important thing. Pressure treated is heavier. Why? Because it's got a whole bunch of 
you know, oils and stuff in it to, to protect it. If you got a cap on it, I mean, what you need to have one of these wooden drawer systems, you probably don't need pressure treated. Pressure treated, probably a dumb move as well. So I would avoid, definitely avoid pressure treated. And if you want to avoid these two by eights, unnecessary. Honestly, that was, that's the only thing I would change. Everything else has been great. Oh, there is one other thing. I apologize. Right on here. I would have used half inch ply here, not this OSB. This OSB, it creates too much sawdust. You know, too much, too much wood, wood chips from going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You can even, I mean, this is a lot of dirt and pine needles and stuff, but there's, it creates a lot of dust. And when we take this apart, which I will, you'll probably see a lot of sawdust in here. That's what I would change. So two by eights, really unnecessary. Try and cut down on the weight, half inch plywood here. Keep the three quarter plywood on the top because for strength purposes, get rid of this OSB. I think you'd be in good shape. Even this, these are one by sixes. Jeez, if you got a table saw, half inch plywood. I mean, I mean, even three quarter plywood would probably be less weight than this if you can rip it up. So what about these hooks? These are, what are these? Ever built? I think they're just some cheap $2 hooks with a single screw in it. This, uh, they worked fine. I mean, I didn't use them that much. I didn't tie anything down, you know, like super tight or heavy or, uh, but these are, geez, this is a thousand pound working load, one of these things, which, you know, uh, let's, let's talk about a working load here. Um, this thing says a thousand pounds working load. That's great, but this is what matters. The screw right here. You think this screw pull out is a thousand pounds? No, it is not. Now, if this was bolted through a piece of steel, that's then that working load works. But if you're screwing this down, don't look at this. Oh, I could do a thousand pounds. This thing's rock solid. It's not. It's all about the screw. So how did I screw down this piece of plywood right here? I had the those four tie down points. Well, that that screw actually went through the tie down through the three quarter into the sidewall. So in reality, that was four connections right there. And then you can see I got one here. And I used serious anti-corrosion, heavy duty screws. You can see I mean, it takes a Torx to take them out. That's how you know they're good. If you're taking th something out with a Phillips, it's not a good screw. Let me tell you something, don't use a crappy screw on anything you think one day you'll have to take out again because it will be unusable. We're really doing a post-mortem now. Hmm. A lot of wood splinters. You know, maybe not as much as I did thought there would be, but I brush them out all the time. So it's, it's I guess it's no wonder there's not a ton of chips back there. So what do I got? What what let's look at what I got here. One thing I gotta be careful of is, is that since there's no top on this thing, it could very easily flip. Um, right here, I always put the stuff that, that, um, that I think I'm going to need right away. You know what I mean? Like immediately. I don't want to be digging for it. Like for instance, rags, dog brush for ticks, uh, dog leash, couple knives, headlamp, gloves, that sort of stuff. Little, I don't know, this looks like garbage to me. Throw that over here. Next thing I got is this is this is I guess like first aid, I guess you want to call it, but it's mostly dog first aid. It's um Marsha's secret. Dogs for the dog claws. It stops ice from getting in there. This is mule tape. This really is not supposed to be in here. This is supposed to be back here. This fast orange hand, hand cleaner. This is right. It's got the DEET, I believe it's got DEET in it. This is a homemade dog boot out of a motorcycle tire, uh, inner tube. Bandages, the, the ones that connect to itself, basically vet wrap is what you call it in the dog world. But I mean, self-adhering, sports wrap, see that? That's really, really good. Eye wash, this is important for you and the dog. Um, you know, dogs running through bushes. They're just nonstop. They just push right through and they'll get little things in their eyes. So you pull down their eyelid and the, uh, my friend John told, told, 
talk to me about that. He's got a draught, and he showed me this one time, and I was like, you know, that's a good idea. I've got to keep some eye wash on me. This is for a shotgun. This is cleaner for a shotgun. And this is a this is a backup uh, inverter, just in case I keep that in here. This is a truck fix-a-flat. I would suggest everyone carry one of these things. Your spouse should have one. If, you're, if your spouse is not someone that can change a tire, this thing right here. This is a truck size. They make a smaller one, like down here for regular cars. Extremely easy to use. Mechanics, they hate it, but you know what? Who cares? If you got it, if you got your left tire, you know, left side, and you're pulled over, it can be dangerous to change that. Those those driver side tires are that is that is bad news. Um, sometimes you can't pull off the road far enough, um, and I mean, you're you could be right on the line there trying to change a tire. You don't want that, and you don't want your spouse doing that. Fix a flat. I keep it with me, even though I keep a plug kit. I keep a plug kit. I keep a air compressor too on me. This is fuses, duct tape. Got to have a roll of duct tape on you. Got to have a roll of duct tape on you. Zip ties. I probably should have some really, really big heavy duty ones also, but these are just zip ties. Um, some, some wire, just some, some spare wire. This is a deflator kit. So it's a deflator kit and it also has a, um, you know, a tire, tire gauge in there. I'll put this thing back in here. Uh, shotgun shells. I don't think those need much explanation. Rope, some spare cups, an atlas. This is like GoPro stuff. Uh, this just happens to be a spray bottle, a scraper, flares. This happens to be a can opener, which shouldn't be over here. That should be up there. And um, this is a pocket saw. This is one of those chainsaws. You know what I mean? Your hand, you hold it, they work real well. Let's push this thing in. Now this one, this one used to have a ton of tools on this side. I used to keep a toolbox here. And then just some regular, like, you know, you know, one-off tools like a razor blade. This is a dog whistle, should be on this side. Not that it matters now. Bungee cords, rope, a whole bunch of plugs, wires and stuff, small little ax hatchet. And this right here, this is important. What is this? It's a piece of wood. Well, you ever try and jack up your car on mud? It doesn't work. I can tell you that right now. Keep a piece of wood like this on you. Put this down on the mud, then you put the jack on it, and you'll be in okay shape. Jacking on sand or mud doesn't work. Learned that the hard way. This, I just made this thing so that I had a place, a little worktop. But yeah, again, there used to be a toolbox in here. I got one of these cheap... I split it in half, but this was this is one half. I took the hinge out. Um, that was one half, and this is the other half. Like a hundred bucks. Keep one of these things on you. At one point in time, though, it was my only toolbox, so I was taking it out and in and out and in and out and in. Uh, so now over here, ratchet straps. Tons of ratchet straps. Here's a little fold-up shovel. Almost good for nothing. Tree saver. Uh, more ratchet straps. Couple pieces of two by four. Why? Uh, you get stuck in the mud. Look it up. Small ratchet straps and a two by four will get you out of there. Out of there. You, you ratchet strap the two by four to your tire like this. Let me show you quick. You can look it up. But uh, take the, take the two by four. You put it right there. Maybe a hair over, but not too much. Don't put it like this. Put it like right here and ratchet strap through your wheel, like this. And then, as you drive, make sure obviously it gets through. See this right here? Not so good. The, um, but um, you pull that thing off and it's fine. And you, it, when this tire comes down here, it's going to, this is gonna brace across the mud, or the sand, and it's gonna lift you right out. And it goes, oh, doom, 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 doom. And uh, look it up on, on YouTube. And that's it. 
some rags back here. But um, other than that, that's pretty much it. That's what I keep with me. This is what I keep with me all the time. Fortunately, a lot of the recovery stuff I only had to use maybe once or twice in my life. Um, fix a flat I haven't used in a long time. Tire plug kit, I've been lucky. I haven't used it in a long time. Uh, I've definitely had to use my air pump for sure. I've used that a whole bunch of times. Just, you know, tires get low and you don't know where there's a gas station, so you fill it up. Not that you would have broke down or anything, but it's nice to get that light off your dash. Um, the 2x4 method, I have used that in the past. I haven't needed to use it here. I've been taking tires a lot more seriously. Tires are everything. Drawers are out. And most of the gear stuff over here on top of the dog box for now. There's the two drawers. Uh, lift them up pretty easy. It wasn't, it wasn't hard at all. Here is, here it is without the drawers. Now this was shown in the video, the last video, I think. Yeah, no, it was shown exactly like this. And I had the drawers too when I was showing how they go in and out. But here you can see definitely some dirt. This you'd say to yourself, oh, there's a mouse living in here, but no, this is this is this is feathers from birds. No issues here. This is still rock solid. Now, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but this is not screwed in. I didn't screw this into anything. What I did was is that I, I see that? It's pressure fitted into this corner right there. See that? So this one's actually loose. Why is that? And I guess I just didn't crank it down enough, the screws. But uh, that's this is pressure fitted in. This is not screwed into the bed. I did that very specifically. I didn't want to screw into the bed. If I remember correctly, I, I just got to unscrew all these small pieces. Get these out of here. Should be able to just lift it out. Yeah, because that's how I did it. I screwed I screwed these pieces in like this. I should have made a video on how to build this thing because then I could have remembered how I built it. Another thing you should keep with you. This is a, just a four x four with an angle cut into it. What, what do I use this for? Two things. One is, is that it provides a little extra if you have to jack up something that's, that's higher. Gives you a little extra step. Um, in fact, you could probably see there's a circular mark right here. Because that's from the jack. It also is a wheel chuck. Right? You never take a 4x4 four four and put it in your car to use for something and not cut this on an angle. I mean, it's just, there's no reason not to do that. You do that and then now you got yourself something you can put behind the wheel so that the car doesn't roll back. Screws that are stripped. Ugh. That's the worst. That is not good. How the hell did I get those out of there? I know one tool that will get them out, actually. It's a very precise tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it right there. That did it. Beautiful. This thing. Not 
stop slipping. Please stop slipping. Okay. Oh, wait, look at that. Okay. Not this has made a little, that much of a difference, but we got a little rot over here back in from that corner. Let's see it right there. Corner and over there. That one looks a little bit worse. That one looks a little bit worse. But yeah, you can you can break it, you can break it off. This one's this one's pretty bad. You know, held together, but and that is because the cap that I had on clearly. I didn't have any weather stripping in here, and you can see, look, if it's sitting on top of this, there's a good quarter inch there where water can come in. And that's what happened. It, it collected back here. Nice. Suck it. So what's the plan with this? The plan is, I would give it to somebody. I've tried to give it to a couple of people. Um, you gotta be, there's gotta, it's a special circumstance that you're in, but that you want like a draw system. I've asked a couple of people, one person said they would take it, but they're actually gonna get a deck system. And if you watch that last video, you know, deck systems, they're awesome. They're awesome. I wouldn't suggest making a draw system with draw slides on your own. I think it's stupid. But a deck system, um, I mean, they are super nice. You know, the point that I made in that video was is that you shouldn't really need draw slides unless you have some sort of problem where you can't you need a little help pulling out a drawer that's heavy. The cool thing about the deck system that I didn't really think about is, is that they're all waterproof, which means you don't need the cap. That's nice. The second thing is, is that they look awesome, which means if you have a nice new truck and you go and put a big wooden drawer system in there, kind of tacky. You know, I got a work truck here. It's just a, you know, just a beat up truck. I mean, it's not beat up, it's 2018, but you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a truck you beat on because it's a base model truck. It's, I use it for fishing, I use it for hunting. That's what I use it for. So I threw the, you know, the draw system in there, the wooden one, but I have to say, nice new truck. Yeah, plunk down the 1500. If you know for sure you like a draw system, then it's probably the right move. If you want draw slides, if you want waterproof, if you don't want to have the cap, if you don't have the cap, you definitely need a deck system. But also if you want it to look real nice, deck is the way to go. It's an amazing product, there's no doubt about that. All right, so let's figure out what we're gonna do. The plan, the plan was I was gonna give it to somebody if nobody wants it, I'm gonna retrofit it for the Suburban. I mean, might as well, right? I mean, I you know, the drawers are made, I wouldn't change anything about the drawers except the front. The fronts are two by eights, right? Um, I will take that, those off and put one by eights on here. That'll save some weight, no problem. And I would keep the three quarter ply without a doubt. You should always have three quarter ply. And I might just swap out the two by eights for, for one by eights. And I'd probably get rid of this one as well and put a one by eight from here to there. <laughs> Nothing hanging off. And honestly, you can't have anything hanging off. It's, a, it's different, the Suburban. That's a different situation. And I got to hold it on by turnbuckle. So that's probably what I'm going to do. All right, I'm done. I think this is it. Draw systems out. Two years. It's been great for me. I, I would definitely do it again. I would definitely do it again, especially because of how cheap it was, for sure. It only cost me, geez, probably 150 bucks worth of wood. Nowadays, obviously the wood's a little bit more expensive. I'm not sure when you're watching this, but wood's a little bit more expensive right now. Now I used, I didn't have to buy, I had to buy three quarter plywood. That's the only thing I had to buy that I didn't have. Maybe the OSB, maybe I didn't have the OSB. All the lumber I had. Um, other than that, that's it. I recommend a wood drawer system if you're on a budget. If you got a brand new, nice truck, you don't mind spending the money. It's a, it's a bunch of money, that deck system. But I would say that that might be the way I would go. Now, I'm getting a new truck, brand new. But I 
don't think I'm going to put a draw system in. I got other plans for it, I think. Um, this is probably a topic for a different video. But essentially, don't do stuff to cars. Don't spend a lot of money on something if you feel like you're going to, if what you really want is a lot more money than you're spending. If you want X, but it costs a ton of money, and so you'll settle for a Y, don't do that. Just don't put Y in and just save your money and wait till you can afford X. The thing I want is a lot of money that's not even available yet. So we'll talk about that in a different video. For now, <clears throat> that's the draw system. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was probably very long. <laughs> All right, I'll see you.